trembling. who became every woman's lover as the rogue in Room at the Top. Now in Tennessee Williams' most sensual story of a man who boldly tastes every exciting moment of life and a woman who fears what life can bring. Now listen to the anatomy lecture. This is the brain, which is hungry for something called truth. This middle is the belly, which is hungry for food. Here, hungry for love, because it is sometimes lonesome. I fed them all, as much as I could or as much as I wanted. You fed none, nothing. Geraldine Page, hailed by Tennessee Williams himself as America's finest actress, compared only with Bernhard and Doucet. Winner of every major acting award on Broadway, now challenges all of the great motion picture performances of the past in the role that touches every hidden facet of human strength and frailty, the role of Alma in Summer and Smoke. I have loved you as long ago as our childhood when I used to hear your friends calling you. It had become that early, this, this affliction of love. What is it that's troubling you, Nellie? I get these funny feelings. Where and when? See, uh, when I'm with boys sometimes. Oh? Not really boys, men, especially if they're handsome. And why is it that whenever we make love, you never make love without biting or scratching or leaving a little blood on me? Because I know I can't hold you. And maybe I'm angry. Some women surrender to the desires of their husbands out of a sense of duty. Sheer duty. Go through life never known. What a beautiful, wonderful, exciting thing it can be. specializes in screen comedy. Remember how he made you howl and some like it hot? Remember how he delighted you in the apartment? Well, now Billy Wilder's done it again in his hilarious new comedy, One, Two, Three. All right, here we go. First, Get a barber and a manicurist up to the office. Next, call my lawyer. I want him here immediately. Next, I want to speak to the manager of the Berlin Hilton. Yes, sir. And send Ingeborg in here with pad and pencil. Yes, sir. Tell him off. One, two, three. I'm going to leave the workers down there. Here he vote. Put your pants on, Spartacus. Yeah. Oh, I've been engaged four times. All the women in our family are sort of hot-blooded. <laughs> What have we got here? It's just that last night Mr. McNamara made me take my dress off. Playful, isn't he? Oh, he had a perfect right to, after all, he paid for it. Well, that makes all the difference. No, no, you don't understand. It's part of my job. What do you call fringe benefit? <sighs> How do you like that? The son of a... is starting his own Marshall plan. <laughs>
the donuts that our state fair is the best state fair in our state. In the grandest tradition of Rogers and Hammerstein, 20th Century Fox fills the screen with delightful freshness, the newest kind of entertainment, and these great young stars. Pat Boone, as you've never seen him before. I know what I like, and I liked what I saw, and I said to myself, Yeah, that's for me. Bobby Darren, America's singing idol. This is in heaven, so what? You're not an angel, no, you're not. Pamela Tiffin, the beauty who has captivated two continents. I'd say that I had spring fever, but I know it isn't spring. And Margaret, the most exciting new talent to hit Hollywood in years. Well, maybe I'll never be the love of your life. And Tom Ewell and Alice Faye. And what do you mean? That I've been here before. In this room? No. The number's different, but I've been here. Does that mean you're... Uh, you're a, a, a bad girl? Willing and eager and happy to be and couldn't get out. <laughs> we lose some of our best people that way. Come fly with me. That's your invitation to join these three airborne lovelies on a round-the-world manhunt. Dolores Hart stakes out some real nobility for herself. Oh, what a marvelous cigarette case. Is that your coat of arms? Carl Bohm, complete with crest, title, and a police record. I hope I'll see you again soon. I hope so, too. Well, how about tonight? Lois Nettleton picks a big oil man from Texas, Carl Malden. Well, it just happens you got a couple of squares on your hands. You giddy? Me, too. I am the biggest square in North Barry. Oh, uh, put her there, son. En garçon qui connaît la charbonnette, il a fait sa moisson de repas only a reckless lass like Pamela Tiffin would set her romantic sights on a jet jockey like Hugh O'Brien. Ray! Oh, it's quite all right. She's a second cousin on my mother's side. He's a pilot with a girl in every port. Every airport, that is. Stop looking so gun-shy. Katie, if I was your husband, I'd be after me with a whole arsenal. Get off of there! Get out! Get out! What is Hurry! It? Her husband! Come fly with me as your bid to take a fling at life, love, and laughter. Around the world in 80 minutes of Jet Age Entertainment. Filmed against the dazzling excitement of some of the most glamorous spots on Earth. 
with a top flight cast of exuberant young stars and the voice of Frankie Avalon. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. the youngest, freshest, wildest motion picture ever to surf up on the screen. Hi, Sandy, ding. Hey, listen, how about a nice little... No. Sandy, honey, what is there about me that makes me so utterly resistible to you? Here come those whole daddies and beats dollies in the swingingest young people's picture of the year. Oh, daddy, oh, daddy, oh, daddy, oh, daddy, oh, daddy, oh, daddy. Pups don't ride them high and wide. Grammys get all mashed up. Inside. It's a frolic loaded with guys and gals dedicated to the pursuit of each other. You're both crazy. This is the lively set. James Darren's crazy about cars and Pamela Tiffin. Pamela Tiffin's crazy about James Darren in and out of cars. Doug McClure's crazy about Joni Summers. And Joni Summers crazy about Bobby Darren's new song hits. You love your girl, you just got to let it show. They get you where the fun and action are every time they grab a wheel or a girl. Edie, I'll count to five and I'll break down this door, do you hear me? Go back to your turbans and, and marry them for all I care. I'm glad you showed you two colors before we were married. I'm grateful to you. Really, I am. And don't you come running after me or I will call the police. Hey. Well, I'm sorry, Chuck. The Lively Set takes you where the real action is. In romance, in racing. See Braxter's race at three miles a minute. See the jet propelled J-47. See the Bonneville World Speed Record Run. See the world's first turbine car, the car of tomorrow and the youth of today, in the famous Tri-State Endurance Race. A scream first. See international speed kings in action. Mickey Thompson, Duane Carter, Billy Krause, James Nelson, and Ron Miller. This is the lively set. Will you please not disturb us? Hello? If my daughter weren't here, I'd tell you exactly what I think of you. Mr. Manning, will you get off this phone and put Edie on? You lower your voice or I'll punch you in the nose. That's right. I'd like to win that race myself. I could use $20,000. What are you going to enter with? A wheelbarrow? And sell me the streamliner and the chassis from the stocker. I'd rather sell that stuff for junk first. Youth challenges the future down a thousand tire screaming miles of danger. Hey, Las Vegas, here we are! <laughs> you live it up. You laugh it up. You love it up. You love the year is 1877, and trouble is brewing in the great Southwest. The natives are restless. The cavalry is anxious. The miners are thirsty. The temperance ladies are up in arms. Why? Because 40 wagons full of whiskey are heading west along the Hallelujah Trail. And so are Bert Lancaster, the cool colonel. I don't wish to intrude on your privacy, colonel, but this is vitally important. I'm taking a bath. Well, the sight of a gentleman taking his bath is not foreign to a woman who's been widowed twice. You forgive me if I don't get up. Lee Remick, the hot-tempered temperance lady. And if we are to respect man, then we must save man from himself and from the poison of alcoholic spirits. Jim Hutton, the agitated adjutant. Chief says, no more peace. Pamela Tiffin, the colonel's delectable daughter. Donald Pleasance, the unpredictable oracle. The chief says he wants uh, 20 wagons of uh, mini uh, crazy water. 20 wagons of whiskey? 
That chief, uh, he's a real boozer, Colonel. Brian Keith, the irascible wagon master. Do I smash a barrel? One barrel! I'll have those brass buttons ripped off your chest in the very halls of Congress. I'm a taxpayer and a good Republican. You'll say that one more time, Mr. Wellingham, and I'll bust you right in the nose. And when they meet, all hallelujah breaks loose along the Hallelujah Trail. Harper. Harper is, well, that's a little tougher. Here are some girls who think they've got him pinned down. Playing cat and mouse with a man like Harper is a dangerous game. Mouse always gets caught. But I like dangerous games. Your husband keeps lousy company, Mrs. Sampson. As bad as there is in L.A., and that's as bad as there is. Don't tangle with Lou Harper. Go drink some poison, you got a better chance. He's got cup size and he knows how to hurt. I think I can convince my friends on the narcotics squad that those tracks are fresh. What else you know? Nothing. Come on. Nothing. Come on. Nothing, Puddler. He's Fuzz Puddler, private. That Lou Harper sure has me pegged. He knows I can't say no. I want you to go. What the hell you say? Now go. Not when I'm like this. What do you want from me? Just a few kind words. What else? Anything I can get. I'm not a child anymore. So if Lou Harper won't come to me, then I'll go to him. You're young, rich, and beautiful. If my wife is divorcing me, what do you think I think? I think you want to relax. All right, honey. You really want to play around. Just douse pipes and seal off the room. I've been worked over by experts. All I got left is bruises. So whatever Harper does to me, I guess I asked for it. Who knows? Maybe I even like it. I'll take your shoes. That's a female point of view for whatever it's worth. What about the male? Hey! Hey, time of the morning. Alan Taggart. Lou Harbor. That's Mr. Sampson's daughter. Yeah, that's the male point of view, all right. But that ain't the right fella. There. That's Harbor now. Harper actively participates with qualified young people's programs. You mean to break that down? You want him? You really mean it? Go ahead. Hot damn! Yes, detective work is really fun. People often ask Harper what he does this kind of crummy work for. What do you do this kind of crummy work for, anyway? Are you trying to be funny? I do it because I believe in the United Nations and Southeast Asia, and so long as there's a Siberia, you'll find Lou Harper on a job. Are you putting me on? Gee, I don't think so. Paul Newman is Harper. General Santa Ana captured the Alamo. In 1969, another Mexican general is about to try again. A general who can't lead and an army that won't follow are about to recapture the Alamo in the most hysterical non-war that ever rocked Texas. Oh no, we're closed! We're closed! 
Fallen, but the fun is just beginning. You're not fooling me. You're working for the Chinese communists. Who? Maybe we could drop leaflets in Spanish. Ask them to give themselves up. Leaflets take too long to make. Well, maybe we could get them Xerox. Maybe we could set up some big public address system amplified. Yeah. Just come with a sort of a sexy voice. Kind of a Alamo rule. Wait a minute. Forget it. Our Sam Gillison, M.D. Now, don't talk. You just listen to me, Sam. It's all beginning to happen just like you said it would. What, Storty? Where are you, Aunt Hetty? Shh! Now, listen, Sam. Sam, the Chinese communists have taken over the Alamo. Alamo? Bust out the ammunition. I tried to tell you. You didn't tell me to bring no ammunition. Red for retreat. A red flare for retreat. A green flare for attack. Have you got that? Yes, sir. 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 No, folks, this is not the end, but you'll have to see it all to believe it. Some heroes are born, some are made, some are simply mistakes. Take it from me, Jonathan Winters. You must meet Max, the most magnificent mistake of them all.
Anthony Quinn is Def Smith, the man who hears with his eyes and speaks with his gun. Franco Nero is Johnny Ears in Los Amigos. In 1834, Erastus Smith, a deaf mute, and his maverick partner, Johnny Ears, two hard-nosed heroes of Texas' War of Independence, were sent by Sam Houston to prevent the takeover of the new republic by powerful, power-hungry men. Men who, with private armies of hired killers, were attempting to carve personal empires out of a fledgling nation still staggering from the ravages of battle. Def Smith and Johnny Ears, their women, their wards. Def Smith and Johnny Ears. Two men who blasted their legend in Texas history. Two men whose daring and courage were all that stood between democracy and dictatorship. Two men. Two guns face a renegade army of professional gunfighters with Texas the prize. Los Amigos. Two men you'll never find.